Welcome back, mighty friends. Brother TC here, coming at you live from down on the bayou. Yeah, a place in the great divide where the water lies and the river flows. Yeah, a big red stick in your hand. A TBD. Yeah. All those years in Mystery Babylon, I always said TBD. That was Tom Blaylock's del- delight. Others said it was to be determined, but uh, all the men under me knew what it really meant. Yeah, I send my love upon you all this day in peace, mercy, grace, that your heart would be filled with love of the kingdom of light and the righteousness of the Son of Everlasting, the living word, wantingly. Yeah, like a bee making a hive, wantingly preparing a place for the everlasting Father to reside. Yeah, only the work of the wise master builder deep inside can the unhewn stones be set. Yeah, and the witness, the faithful witnesses of the circumcision. Yeah, the casting forth of their flesh to set forth the flame of fire in their heart. Yeah, that the word of everlasting Yea, the living word would be in our hearts and minds forever this day as a thousand years and a thousand years as if just this one day. So today we are going to see what happens to the unrighteous queens and kings and the righteous let them also be revealed in the words that bring forth the gushing of the fountain yea the mighty wind rustling like cattle on the East Texas Plain, yeah, rolling up into a slaughterhouse in Kilgore, Texas. We got to get our gallon cans full of blood filled up to go catfishing, yeah, down in the Lake of the Pines. Slicing that blood bait real thin and putting it on that trot line about every eight foot. Yeah, pulling up them old granddaddies. Yeah, them old greatest and grandest of all the fish of the deep. Yeah, Lake of the Pines. That's where my granddaddy used to take me and we used to go fishing down there, and we'd pull up some 50, 60 pounders up out of that place. And he had me skin them and gut them and take their heads off, cut them up as big two-inch thick steaks, 
Better than any beef you ever ate, they say. I never got to eat one of them big two-inch, you know, big-as-your-head kind of catfish steaks, but uh, my granddaddy sure did like selling them down there in Kilgore, Texas. Yeah, we'd bring them down there live. He had a place built down there, a little live tank. We'd put them 50, 60 pounders. Yeah, we'd have some 10, 20 pounders in there too. A few 30s and 40s swimming around. and Live catfish for sale. You'd come and pick out which one you wanted. Not $2 a pound live, whatever it is. And we'll cut it up however you want it. Pay the live weight. Two dollars a pound. You hang it up on the on the scale. And this one weighs fifty three pounds, and that'd be a hundred and six dollars, sir. He pulls out cash money, and then we start slicing and removing that head. Asking him how he wants it. He wants a fillet. Uh, he wants a a fat back. He wants a steak. How you want that catfish sliced up? Yeah, you like it nice and thin, little nuggets like they do at the Catfish Kitchen, do you? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, you do know that the good book says that if we, that, that we are to consider things of the deep that do not have scales, as unclean and I have pulled enough slimy catfish up out of the bottom cut enough heads off in my day to know that uh, there ain't no scales on a catfish and Lord knows I ate a 10 bushel basket loads in my lifetime but I don't eat it no more cause the word lives within my heart within my mind and while there are those who would say that all things are spiritual there is a doorway yea a teeter totter that goes up and down yea one only has to find where the two sticks Yea, lie and lay as 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 the queen of Yehuda. Yea, when Athaliah, the mother of Hazaziah, saw her son was dead she rose and destroyed all the royal offspring second chronicles 22 10 through 12 can you believe the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead and she got up and destroyed all the royal offspring. Can you believe that she did such a thing? Unimaginable. But Yahosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Haziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons who were being put to death, and placed him and his nurse in the bedroom. So they hid him from Athaliah, Athaliah, and he was not put to death. 
So he was hidden with her in the house of Mariahova six years while Athaliah was reigning over the land. Now, in the seventh year, Yehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds of the Karaites and of the guard. Karaites, you hear, men of honor. Now in the seventh year, Yehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds of the Karaites and of the guard and brought them to him in the house of Mariahova. Then he made a covenant with them and put them under oath in the house of Mariahova and showed them the king's son. Second Chronicles 23, 1 through 21 and Second Samuel twenty twenty three Ye faithful first and second witnesses of the word living and alive of the kings and priests of the Melek Zadik Ye the kings and priests of righteousness rejoice in these words. He commanded them saying this is the thing that you shall do. One third of you who come in on the Sabbath and keep watch over the king's house. One third also be at the gate sur. And one third at the gate behind the guards. Yea, let them, they shall keep watch over the house for defense. Two parts of you, all who go out on the Sabbath, shall also keep watch over the house of Mariahova for the king. Then you shall surround the king, each with his weapons in his hand, and whoever comes within the ranks shall be put to death. And be with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. Numbers 27, 16, and 17. Yea, for all within the ranks. So the captains of hundreds, yea, all of them Karaites, were they not? Did according to all that Yehoiada the priest commanded. And each one of them took his men who were to come in on the Sabbath with those who were to go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. The priest gave to the captains of hundreds the spears and shields that King David's, which in the house of Mariahova, yea, the spears and shields of the beloved David from the house of Mariahova. Second Samuel 8 and 7 is your faithful witness. The guards stood each 
with his weapons in his hand. From the right side of the house to the left side of the house. By the altar and by the house around the king. Then he brought the king's son out and put the crown on him and the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, Live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the God, ye the people, she came to the people in the house of Maniahovah. She looked, and behold, the king was standing by the pillar according to the custom with the captains and the trumpeters beside the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew trumpets. Then Athaliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! And Yehoiada, the priest, commanded the captains of hundreds who were appointed over the army and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks, and whoever follows her, put to death with the sword. For the priest said, Let her not be put to death in the house of Mariahovah. So they seized her, and when she arrived at the horse's entrance of the king's house, she was put to death there. Genesis 9 and 6 for the faithful witness. Then Yohaira made a covenant between Mariahovah and the king and the people that they would be Mariahovah's people, also between the king and the people. All the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down. His altars and his images they broke in pieces thoroughly and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of Mariahovah. Second Kings 10, 26 and 27. Words just before we jumped in together forever in this moment. He took the captains of hundreds and the Karaites and the guards and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of Maria and came by the way of the gate of the gods to the king's house. So he sat on the throne of the kings. Yohoiada. So all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet. For they had put at Haliah to death with the sword at the king's house. Proverbs 11 and 10. Yehoash was seven years old when he 
became king. Second Chronicles 24, 1 through 14 for Yehoash. Yeah, he reigns over Yehuda in the seventh year of Yehu, Yehoash became king. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zabiah of Beersheba. Beersheba. Hmm. You know, if a man had a buffalo nickel and he flipped it up and spun it off his right thumb tip and he caught it in his left hand and it said, Amos 5-5, five, five. What would it mean in your hand if it fell within it? But do not resort to Bethel, and do not come to Gilgal, nor cross over to Bathsheba, for Gilgal will certainly go into captivity, and Bethel will come to trouble. Shema Israel. Yehoash did right in the sight of mighty Ahovah all his days. Yea, he reigned forty years in Jerusalem, in which Yehoiada the priest instructed him. Oh, thank you, Father, for all the Yehoiadas. Yea, all the Yahoashes, yea, and the sweet mother's hand of Zabiah, yea. But what's this? Only the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Second Kings 14 and 4. What will become of these people that do this wickedness before mighty Ahovah? Could their temple ever be repaired? Could the glory, knowledge, foundation stone ever be set? that they may stand and burn the wood, hay, and stubble from their lives. Then Yehoash said to the priests, All the money of the sacred things which is brought into the house of Mari Yehovah, in current money, the money of each man's assessment, all the money which any man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of Mare Yehovah. Let the priests take it for themselves, each from his acquaintance, and they shall repair the damages of the house wherever any damage may be found. But it came about that in the twenty-third year of King Jehoash, the priests had not repaired the damages of the house. Then King Jehoash called for Jehoiada the priest and for the priests. Yea, those 
ones that burnt the incense in the high places perhaps those are the priests and said to them all why do you not repair the damages of the house now therefore take no money from your acquaintances but pay it for the damages of the house so the priests agreed that they would take no money from the people nor repair the damages of the house but yo Yoiada, the priest, took a chest and bored a hole in its lid and put it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of Mariahova. And the priests who guarded the threshold put in it all the money which was brought into the house of Mariahova. When they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's scribe and the high priest came up and tied in bags and counted the money which was found in the house of Mariahova. Second Samuel eight seventeen. They gave the money which was weighed out into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of Mariahova, and they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of Mariahova, and to the masons and the stonecutters, and for buying timber and hewn stone. Hewn stone? To repair the damages to the house of Maria Hova? And for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. You are the temple. Each of us are the temple of Mariahova. Mystery Babylon seeks to destroy the spiritual nature. Make you believe there is no such thing. The great power of the everlasting sun glistening on the still water. Yea, as a man lays, yea, as he stands in the green pasture and consumes it. Yea, until the word is everlasting within his heart and his carnal mind remains no more his spiritual mind awakened to the workmen, the cutters, yeah, the tradesmen of timber and hewn stone. But there were not made for the house of Mariahova silver cups, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, any vessels of gold or vessels of silver from the money which was brought 
into the house of mighty Yehovah. For they gave that to those who did the work. And with it they repaired the house of mighty Yehovah. Let these workmen prove their salt. Yeah. Shavua told fellow workmen. Yeah, fellow reaper. Fellow sower of the seed in men's hearts. Yeah, dare you distill the drops of righteousness upon them. Yeah. Unlock their mind unto the ninety four per cent that awaits ye, the everlasting glory revealed upon the mercy seat in the tabernacle of an anointed mind. Ye, your mind. Nor slave, nor free, no man, no woman. Only the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. The Son in the Father. Each of us in the Son. And the Son in each of us. Our soul, our feet washed, our heart circumcised, the veils, yea, let them be as covering above, yea, our anointed mind, yea, let the tearing of their veils be be as whispering willows of the vine. Moreover, you see, they did not require an accounting from the men into whose hand they gave the money to pay to those who did the work, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of Mani Yehovah. It was for the priests alone. Ye, are you a king and a priest? Has your Louisiana Cajun queen Proved your worth. Yea, that the faithfulness of the dealings of those who do the work, yea, would not fall upon a heart and mind corrupted with the love of money. But only a workman, skilled, a wise master builder, to bring forth what is required in order to manifest the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. Ye, mighty Father, be in our hearts and minds, ye, so as lace, ye, Eighth light of Hanukkah piercing under the veil. Yea, let their little skirts be ripped from them this very day. Yea, let their white linen be made known. Let the wickedness die this day in the hearts of those that manifested upon the earth.
Then Hazael, king of Aram, went up and fought against Gath and captured it. What is Gath, I say? Hmm. What could it be? Let's see. Haziel, the king of Aram. Haziel is a proper noun designating Haziel, a king of Aram in Syria. From about uh, 841 to 797 before the Common Era, he was a benefit to Israel in his early years, you see. Elijah had anointed him. And he helped eradicate Baalism, the worship of Baal. A faithful man. He may have killed Ben Hadad. He succeeded him as king at any rate. Elisha prophesied of the terror and devastation of Hazel and Aram would bring on Israel. He fought against Israel successfully, but his victories were given because of mighty Yahushua's anger toward his corrupt people. Joash of Yehuda bribed him to cease his attack on Jerusalem, you see. His son, Ben-Hadad II, succeeded him. And Amos announced God's judgment on Haziel and his house. Yea, the king of Aram brings destruction upon Jerusalem. But he went up and fought against Gath. What is Gath is one of the five chief cities of the Philistines. Only Gath is said to have had a king. Goliath, the giant, was from Gath, you know. It was located nearly due east of Ashdod on the coast and lay on a major international road running north and south. Yeah. The ark of God was lodged there temporarily, but the inhabitants suffered plagues, and it was moved on to Ekron. Do you remember that story? It's in uh, 1 Samuel, all oh, around chapter 5, and wanders in and out through chapter 6. That's when David ruled over it during his monarchy the beloved one. Yeah. It was captured by the Syrians. Yeah. In these very passages we are revealing today. Then Haziel, king of Aram, went up and fought against Gath and captured it. And Haziel set his face to go up to Jerusalem. Jehoash, king of Yehuda, took all the sacred things from Jehoashaphat and Jehoram and Haziah, his fathers, kings of Yehuda, had dedicated, and his own sacred things and all the gold that was found among the treasuries of the house of mighty Jehovah, and of the king's house, and sent to Haziel, king of Aram. Then he went away from Jerusalem. 
Hmm. So who has all the sacred things? Haziel, king of Aram. The first Kings 14 and 26 is the faithful witness. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yehuda? His servants arose and made a conspiracy and struck down Joash at the house of Milo. Going down to Sila. What is hidden in these meanings? The house of Milo. That's uh, verse 19. Uh, verse 20. Here we go. Hebrews 44. Oh, 07 it refers to the citadel in Jerusalem hmm the citadel that's a high place it was a man-made construction built into a terrace and was simply called a citadel or a fortress. It was expanded in David and Solomon's reign. The citadel. Hmm. The house of Milo is the citadel in Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting? They slayed him as he was going down to Sila, or Silla. So what is Silla? H fifty-five thirty-eight. I don't really have much on that. Sila. Hmm. Well, for Josachar, the son of Shemeth, and Yehoziabad, the son of Shomir, his servants, struck, and he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Amaziah, his son, became king in his place. Yeah, so who is this king of Israel? In the 23rd year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Yehuda, Yehoaz, the son of Yehu, became king over Israel at Samaria. 17 years. He did evil in the sight of Mary Yehovah, and followed the sins of Yeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel sin. He did not turn from them. So the anger of Mary Yehovah was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Haziel, king of Aram, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Haziel. Verse 
Mighty Yahovah gave Israel a deliverer so that they escaped from under the hand of the Armenians. And the sons of Israel lived in their tents as formerly. Nevertheless, they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, Jeroboam, with which he made Israel sin, but walked in them. And the Asherah also remained standing in Samaria. Yeah, so what is an Asherah? Hmm? Do you know? H842. It's a feminine noun which signifies the Canaanite fertility goddess believed to be the consort of Baal. Because of this association, the worship of Baal and Asherah was often linked together. The noun is most often used for a carved wooden image of the goddess instead of a proper name. This image was frequently associated with the high places and fresh, i.e. green trees, the evergreen perhaps, the pines of the lake, the latter contributing to the misleading translations of the Septuagint, later contributing to the misleading translations of the Septuagint and Vulgate that the word denotes groves. The Israelites were commanded by God to cut down and burn the images and occasionally the Israelites took steps to eliminate them. Nevertheless, Throughout much of Israel's pre-exilic history, false worship was a problem, yeah, even to this day, even to the extent that Asherah's image was erected in God's temple itself. This is the very thing they're talking about here. Nevertheless, they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, with which he made all of Israel sin, but walked in them. And the Asherah also remained standing in Samaria. For he left to Jehoaz of the army, not more than fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen. For the king of Aram had destroyed them and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Hmm? And Jehoiaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. 
and Joash, his son, became king in his place. In the 37th year of Joash, king of Yehuda, Yehoash, the son of Yehoaz, became king over Israel in Samaria. Sixteen years. He did evil in the sight of Mariahovah. He did not turn away from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel sin. But he walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Yehuda, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat on his throne. And Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. When Elisha became sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over him and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. And he put his hand. Then Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands. He said, Open the window toward the east. And he opened. Then Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, Mariahovah's arrow of victory, even the arrow of victory over Aram, for you will defeat the Armenians. At Aphek, until you have destroyed. Then he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. And he struck three times and stopped. So the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck a ram until you would have destroyed. But now you shall strike a ram Three times. Elisha died, and they buried him. Now the bands of the Moabites would invade the land in the spring of the year. As they were burying a man, behold, they saw a marauding band and they cast the man into the grave of Elisha. And when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now Haziel, king of Aram, who oppressed Israel, all the days of Jehoiaz, but Mariahovah was gracious to them, and had compassion on them, 
and turn to them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them or cast them from his presence until now. When Haziel, king of Aram, died, Ben-Hadad, his son, became king in his place. Then Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz, took again from the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Haziel, the cities which he had taken in war from the hand of Jehoaz, his father, three times Yo Joash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel. Yea, mighty friends, the kings. There's so much there. I hope that you have your e-sword. That you have a new American standard version or something like that. That identifies words and phrases that have been added into the translated text. We try and not read those to you. As what we have seen is those words are scripted for some other understanding many times. And if one just reads the words and interjects its comma, its pause at the right moment, the revelation of the word becomes made Manifest in our hearts and minds. Yea. Let this day. Let us this very day. Profess to use. The free use. Of copyright. For the songs and the lyrics and. The depth of the meaning of what is coming forth. Yea, the 37th year calls out to each of us. If we just, as two faithful witnesses, come before the Word and look at our lives 37 years we find an apostolic wholeness. Yea, and a tide that brings the emerald ocean. Yea, that the moon comes and steals away. So, as Chuck and Bruce sing... Let their words pierce your veil. Yea, let them be a chuckle in your heart if you are a scoffer and do not believe in the everlasting. But let your heart rejoice in the word. Yea, in these mighty words. Of Hebrew Pi 37. Yea. Apostolic wholeness. Apostolic wholeness. The serpent outside moves silently through the blades. Looking to buy the fruit that walks along the way. Selecting the one he divides him from the flock. A ram all alone will be devoured in the dark. Almighty Yahuwah, protect us from those that attempt to slither in. 
let us swing fast the hole, placing them on the fence, letting them hang into the rain and wind blow again. The weak are secured, now ready to be gathered in. The hole swung well, the rain, wind, and thunder give rise with revelation of unto men. Dangling, hooked on the fence, the veil serpent slides, falling off the wire, dead in their sins. The apostles and prophets, divorced of the evil that attempts to bite the feet of men, Walk in apostolic wholeness, knowing nothing can bring harm upon them. The blessing of the Ruach is as a sprouting root within. Divine character, well rooted, are marked as righteous ones of Him. Slaying the serpents. Wrapped around the hearts of men, letting the tabernacle be found beneath the cutting away of flesh, carnality, all the things that blind and give deafness to men. The bride in her completeness, a fountain of wisdom set forth by Yahovah, my dear friend, gushes gushes forth at the appointed time with peace, love, and joy, a new Jerusalem. Yeah, a new Jerusalem, indeed. Come on now. Johnny, be good. Come on, y'all.
Shavua told that Johnny would be a beloved tabernacle of David in the hearts and minds of everlasting men in this moment and for all time. Chuck Berry. Yeah, could it be? That Johnny be good to go throughout the city of Jerusalem, y'all, huh? And put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in Jerusalem. 